One of my clients reminded me today that I haven't spoken about relationships on here for quite some time. And I thought to myself, you know, there's a nudge that I needed. So before I get stuck in, I just always like to remind people that first of all, I am no relationship expert. Um, with BPD, relationships are extremely difficult to navigate. And a, not, a lot of the concepts that I talk about are, still, are things that I've had to learn on the job. And I suppose that's the thing about relationships. A lot of the struggles that we experience in our relationships only ever rear their ugly head in the context of a relationship. And this why is sometimes I get so pissed off when people talk about, oh, you know, you have to have done all of the work on yourself before you allow yourself to dip your toe into the dating scene. Because the reality is we can do all of the self work in the world. And yet it's only in a relationship context that a lot of our past pains and past experiences will show themselves because ultimately they were created in a relationship context. So this is where they're going to be evident. And, you know, this idea as well, that you have to love yourself before anybody else can love you. I mean, most of us struggle to like ourselves on a good day, you know. So um, try to take these kind of bits of advice with a pinch of salt. When it comes to your relationship, it's important to have realistic expectations for your partner. And it's amazing, we tend to have far higher standards in place for our romantic partner than we do for ourselves. We tend to come down quite hard on them. And relationships are basically composed of a lot of forgiveness, a lot of understanding, and a lot of compassion. So it's about being realistic about what your expectations for your partner are. Bear in mind as well, there is the gender difference. I mean, we interpret things differently. We have different concepts about what's okay and what's not so, what's not okay. So it's really important to have that communication in place where you discuss the boundaries of the relationship, where you discuss what your expectations are for the relationship and come to some sort of mutual agreement or compromise as to what the relationship should consist of. And this is um, a, a conversation that very few couples have, believe it or not, because it's like as if um, we're almost too afraid to bring it up at the beginning of a relationship. And then by the time we get more confident, the relationship has already established its rules or, you know, the way that it, it operates and it feels like it's too late. However, it is never too late to start putting regular relationship audits in place where you sit down, you talk about what your needs are, you ask the other person if their needs are being met and you discuss ways in which things are working, ways in which things might improve and what your desires are for things going forward. And it's not always an easy conversation to have. However, it is essential. It's like servicing your car. I mean, you need to put it into place and you need to understand that every, no one's perfect you know that um, you need to express what your needs are in order for your partner to understand you a little bit better I think we all want to be understood we all want to feel heard and we all want to feel seen but we're not very good at communicating what it is that we need. But our partners are mind readers. So as I said, having those regular conversations can make or break your relationship. Um, that being said as well, you need to prioritize your partner. I mean, ultimately, we tend to, after the first year or two in a relationship, put our partner way down our list of priorities. It's like as if we've decided that we can just take them for granted. And the reality is this is the person who is most important to us or who's meant to be most important to us. We call them our best friend and yet we very rarely treat them like our best friend. So take a step back and be very honest with yourself about your treatment of your partner and how good you are to them because we tend to have a lot of expectations uh, for their behavior towards us. We expect them to compliment us, we expect them to support us, to you know kind of compromise where necessary necessary to sacrifice things um, and we don't always give them the same in return. So um, an important and um, essential thing to 
understand in your relationships is that the best way to get what you want from your partner is to reflect that, to give it to them. You know, it's it's all very fine and well saying, well, I need X, Y, and Z. But if you're not listening to the other person's needs, well, then it's not very reciprocal. And that's what life is all about, you know, having that reciprocal nature, being good to each other, being kind to each other. Also, when you're looking at your relationship, make sure that it's based on a solid foundation, that you share values, that you share core beliefs. I mean, ultimately, if you don't agree with what a lot of what your partner stands for, um, but they're great in bed or the sex is amazing or, you know, they just have this fantastic job, well, the likelihood is... 10, 20, 30 years down the line when the sex is dead and you know, you're, you're making your own money or whatever it is, um, that you're going to find that there is nothing left there. And if you are interested in building a lifelong partnership with somebody, make sure it's somebody that you enjoy their company, that you really like to converse with, that you really like to engage with. One of the most integral things you can do for your relationship is be less tied into your technology. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of time that we say that our partner and I don't have any quality time. And then when we do get the quality time together, we're both stuck on our phones, you know, and you see it with couples in restaurants, in pubs, out for walks together. They're too busy focused on their screen uh, to actually listen to what the other person is saying. And reverting back to what I said, I mean, what makes us feel good is when we feel understood, when we feel heard, when we feel valued, and when we're not engaging with each other, when we're kind of only half focused on what our partner is saying, we're not creating that rich, you know, kind of deep interaction, meaningful interaction that is so essential to a healthy relationship. So make sure that you give each other your presence, your actual quality time, as opposed to just thinking that you're spending time together, um, but actually being engaged with something else. Be respectful of your partner, even when they're not there. I mean, just have integrity, have, you know, a, a basic level of dignity and respect, because ultimately, as I said, your partner is a, a reflection of you. So you should always speak well about them. Likewise, it's important that you have outlets outside of the relationship. I mean, I think particularly with the culture that we're living in, we tend to put all of our eggs in one basket. We expect that our partner partner is going to fulfill all of our needs and the reality is there's no one human being on the planet that is going to be able to do that for us so make sure that you have other outlets available to you so that you're not always looking on your partner as a failure and as I said understand that nobody is perfect understand that you're not perfect however the more you have an understanding for each other the more you have a kindness for each other and the more you have similar interests and you can um, extrapolate this to doing something that is really good for mankind you know get involved in something uh, charitable outside of the relationship as a couple as opposed to doing the regular things of you know just eating out in a restaurant and going to the cinema do things that will make you feel like better people and um, prop each other up uh, support each other in your endeavors encourage each other to become the best versions of yourself to tap into your true essence as individuals so that you can both pour back into the relationship all that you have to offer. Now, these are just a few short tips for relationships. I hope you find them some ways beneficial. If you would like to work on your relationship skills a little bit, get in touch with me on my website. It's fundamentals.ie.